Hi and welcome to Money Tips. It's Charles Kelly bringing you Money Tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. Uh, hello to everyone on Facebook Live. Great to, to see you all joining in. Uh, and uh, hi to my podcast listeners who are you know usually on uh, iTunes, Stitcher or can find me on the uh, Money Tips dot moneytipsdaily.com website. Today I want to talk to you about the three myths of property investment. These are common myths that I hear all the time from people who are interested in getting into property investment but don't know how and, and mainly they're sort of held back by three myths or common beliefs that, uh, that, that literally makes them think that they can't get into this market. So I'm going to put this mic in. That might be better for my listeners on Facebook. So um, now, many people tell me they want to get into property, but they don't know how to get started. They don't know which strategy to choose. You know, they say to me, well, should I go for residential or commercial or semi-commercial? Should I go for office developments and change them into to residential, office to resi? Um, should I have a, a single let, uh, buy to let, or should I go for a, a HMO or serviced accommodation? You know, there are so many different strategies. And, you know, then they say to me, well, how will I find the money for deposits? Which area should I invest in? Uh, you know, should I should I use my own name or a limited company or a partnership? You know, these are all questions I get asked by people who want to become a property investor. They've seen other people make money from property. They look at the Sunday Times rich list and see how many of those people on the rich list have made their money in property. And they, they see even wealthy millionaires and billionaires who've made their money in other ways put their money into property more or less as a hedge for the, for the future. And they see families like the Duke of Westminster who've held their properties for almost a thousand years in their family name and, and own you know, much of Belgravia and May, Mayfair and they're, they're literally billionaires. But that, is, that aside, that, that's at the top end of the market. But they're asking me how do they, they, they get into it. Now firstly, let me get rid of a few myths that may be holding you back from you know, taking the first step into property. Now, the first step could be just taking a course or going to talk to agents or just looking around. Um, now, if, if you've been held back and you're not even taking the first step, you're never going to get into to property or anything else for that matter. OK, so myth number one is you need your own money to get into property. You know, you need to have a lot of money behind you. You need money to make money or you need money for deposits, et cetera, et cetera. And they, people say, well, I can't do it because I haven't got any money. OK, well, this is not true. There are, there are a number of strategies, proven strategies that work that you can use to get into property investment with either no money, OK, none of your own money, or by using other people's money. So we'll, we'll come on to that later. Myth number two, it takes years and special skills to become a professional property investor. Again, this is really nonsense. I've seen many young property investors, uh, you know, to become experienced or, or good property investors within a few weeks of taking a course or getting onto a mastermind. And they've gone on to build portfolios faster and much larger than so-called experienced investors that have been doing it for years. In fact, once they get on that that fast track, they seem to just race ahead of people that have been doing it for years. It's like some people are on uh, a small country road going along at a certain speed and then people by getting into some training or getting into a mastermind group or just getting around the right people it's like they're on a motorway or a highway and they're speeding past those people that have been struggling along trying to do it themselves for years and trying to work it all out themselves instead of learning from others okay myth number three this is this is another common method myth is that you need special connections or you need to be in the know or in the right circle to get all the best deals you know you hear people saying it's not what you know it's who you know yeah that, that's that, that can be true in some circumstances but you know you, it, it's I don't think this is true this can hold you back from anything to say well that's a closed shop I don't know the right people now anybody can build their network and connections in property first of all by learning how to do it and, and learning a bit about it but then it's simply about getting out there and meeting people. You know, there are hundreds now of, of networking events, courses and seminars running every month, almost every week, all over the country. And not only can you build your connections at these events, but you can also expand your knowledge 
and and just learn a lot more than than you you would just sort of sitting at home watching TV. So how can you get started right now? Well, I'm going to give you one way now. My, my friends at Progressive Property are running several events to give you the opportunity to look at a number of strategies and, and decide which one is best for you, which one resonates with you. So the first one is that their major event is called Multiple Streams of Property Income. And they're running courses now in September, October, and some at the end of October. And that's a three-day event, or it's like a course where they spend a couple of hours on each of many, many strategies. So they go through all sorts of strategies from single buy to let to HMOs to, to deal packaging to uh, service accommodation and so on. They, they, and, and they quickly give you a, a run through of all of those events. And then if you want to dive deeper into those, any of those strategies, you can do so at a later event. But that's an excellent event. I've been on it myself and it really sort of opens your mind and sometimes it might blow your mind to go on to these. And you meet all sorts of people just like you who are getting into property. Some, I was sitting the guy next to a guy um, that I, I said, are you just getting into properties? Well, actually, I own 150 properties already and I'm looking to, to learn new strategies. So you never know who you're going to bump into there. Um, OK, then you might say, well, I've got no money for deposits. So how am I going to get started? Right. OK, so why not start by finding deals and packaging them up for others to sell on? How do you do that? How do you how do you package a deal? How do you get people to buy the deal off you without losing the deal itself? OK, so there's a deal packaging discovery day. Now, there's one, uh, I think, on the 25th of September and there's one in uh, 30th of October. Um, and it's a one day event which will give you a, an overview of the strategy where you can make money from property without using any of your own money because you're going out and finding deals for people that uh, perhaps haven't got time to find deals. I mean, I'd like people to bring deals to me if they can find deals and I would be prepared to pay for a deal uh, from, from a deal packager. So how much do you need for that? You don't need anything, do you? You just need your own time to do some research and go and find them and then put, put them together in a way where, where you're going to get paid and everybody's happy because you're providing deals for other people because they, they, they've got the money but they haven't got the time You've got the time, but you haven't got the money. Do you see how that can marry together? OK, now, if you're just interested in a one day type of event, there's a beginner's property secrets day. So this is a one day event where, you know, you can just go along, get a taster for it, meet some people who are just like you getting into property. And there are various dates for that in September and October. So contact me if you're interested in any of these uh, at charles at charleskelly.net or you can just contact me on, on Facebook. Uh, there's a no money down discovery day. This is where you can do deals, do your own property deals, but without putting in your, any of your own money. Uh, there's a joint venture finance day where you can learn how to, to form joint ventures with other people. Perhaps again, where you marry up the, the person that maybe has got the money, but not the time. And you're putting in the sweat equity and you're putting in the time. But, you, you know, you're using their money to, to start building your own uh, property business. And that's how people like Rob Moore got into property. He, he met somebody at a networking event that was enabled him, enabled him to finance his first couple of property deals. And, and then they learned how to, to form other joint ventures. And now he owns or controls 800 properties between the two of them. So you, you can do this uh, without your own money. And that's the joint venture finance day. There's a service accommodation day, uh, discovery day, where you can learn how to, to set up service accommodation. And again, you can do this on a rent to rent basis without any of your own money. You don't have to own the asset, but you control the asset. That's the difference. And there's a house of multiple occupation discovery day as well in September. This is how to set up HMOs or house of multiple occupation. So you take one property and divide it into rooms and therefore multiply the income and the yield you can get from that. Now, there's all these deals. Get on to me if you're interested in any of these. Obviously, this is for people in the UK. Uh, that can attend events in the UK. Uh, so, you know, if, if you're thousands of miles away, it may not be for you. But we have a lot of people coming in from Europe uh, who fly in for these events and learn how to, because many of these events, uh, these strategies are transferable to, to other countries in, in Europe and even Australia. Uh, so, so that's it uh, for that. Get, get, get hold of me if you want to really bust through these, these myths of property. And these myths apply to other businesses as well. Uh, so, don't, don't be held back by that. Just just 
try and learn and open your mind instead of just believing other people and who say, oh, you need money to make money or you can't get into that because you haven't got the right connections. It's not true. OK, the word of the day today is common hold. Now, you, you may have you may have heard of this. You may not have heard of this. It's a it's a it's a tenure of a way of owning a property in, in the UK. Uh, now, you may have heard of freehold where you own the property, you own the ground under which the property is built. You may have heard of leasehold where somebody else owns the freehold and they give you a long lease uh, in, in, on, on the property. And but you may not have heard of common hold. Now, freehold is where you own the, the land and you own the property. That's understandable. Uh, when you were owning apartments, generally they were uh, given to, to, to people on a leasehold basis. And you, you would own that lease maybe on a long lease, 100 years, 125 years, 99 years. And, and so on. And then at the end of that period, it reverts back to the freeholders. Doesn't sound so good, does it? Well, actually, it's not very good. Now, you can keep extending the lease, but that, that costs you money. So what they've done now is that many new build apartments are, are being sold as common hold, which is where you, you basically own a, a share of, of the freehold under what's called a common hold. I think it's a fairer system to, than, than leasehold. Um, and you're not going to find many of these around, but it's something you, you want to look out for. I personally, um, I, I do own leaseholds, but I don't like leaseholds. I'd prefer to buy a, a flat with a share of the freehold. This is sometimes happens where you've got smaller uh, blocks of flats. Um, and, you know, the Duke of Westminster that I've just mentioned owns, uh, you know, most of Belgravia in London, the most expensive part in, in one of the most expensive areas in London, maybe other than Mayfair. And all of those properties are owned on leaseholds and they will all revert back to the family at some stage. And even though people can extend them, it costs a lot of money to extend a, a leasehold. The other problem with leasehold is that somebody else uh, is controlling the property uh, and, you know, they can put up, they can put charges on the property. They can uh, take the property away from you if you don't pay uh, your, your ground rents and your uh, service charges. They, they can sometimes ramp up the service charges. They can uh, and frequently do just move in and say, right, we want to do work on this property. We're going to use our friends to do the work and we're going to charge you twice what it would normally cost if you just got the work done yourself. They can also impose things on you. And that, that's one of the reasons, as you can see, I, d I don't like leaseholds. Um, and I, I think they're just an unfair, almost sort of feudal system going back to the landed gentry. And I, th I think they should just be phased out or abolished and, and replaced with a fairer system for people. In many countries, they don't have leaseholds, but in, in the UK, we still do. So just watch out for that. Um, I remember my auntie from Ireland when I was a kid, we were going around to uh, estate agents and, and she was looking for a property. And I said to her, well, what's leasehold? And she just said, leasehold is for idiots. And that was stuck in my mind. Um, I wouldn't quite say that sometimes you have to buy a leasehold property when you're buying a flat, but I, I, I think freehold is better. And if you can't get freehold, get a share of the freehold in a block of flats where the, the, the people who own the properties control the management. That's another thing, another aspect called right to manage. But if you're managing the, the, the block of flats yourself, you're not going to be, you're less likely to be ripped off by unscrupulous landlords or freeholders. So that's all for now. Thanks for listening. And thanks for everyone on, on Facebook Live. Hi to, to Stephen there. Alan, good to see you. And uh, I, I will speak to you all again soon. Thanks for listening.